Hello everyone, welcome to another Advent video. This one will be an unboxing and a brief demonstration of this Hoover Pure Power upright vacuum cleaner. Now believe it or not I've had this Pure Power in my collection for almost a year and it was a kind gift for Mark Leslie who chose it from last year's Amazon wish list. And if you check back on my 2017 unboxing video, my Christmas Day unboxing video, you'll see when I first unwrapped it. So finally, I'm actually unboxing it and giving you a brief demo. So thank you again, Mark, for the very generous gift. And uh, sorry it's taken so long to unbox it. If you'd like to contribute to this year's Amazon wish list, you'll find a link below the video. And there's also links on my various social media platforms. Any gift you buy will be opened on my Christmas Day video or Christmas Day videos. And um, I'll thank you during the video. So don't forget to put a little gift message if you can. I have heard from some people that they weren't able to do a gift message. So if I open something without a message, then you'll have to tell me under the video so I can thank you in a later video. Okay, on to the Hoover Pure Power. Let's get it opened. I'm not going to show you the assembly because I've done that with so many other Pure Powers. So you can check back on those videos if you want to see how to assemble it. I'm just going to unbox it. Um, assemble it off camera and then we'll give, give you a brief demo of this upright vacuum cleaner which has to be one of the oldest designs in Hoover's current range. Well I hope there's nothing wrong with this cleaner because it's a little bit late to return it now. I'm sure it'll be fine. So let's get it out. This is the uh, apple white colour I think. What colour do they say it is uh, out of interest? Oh, it's pure white and Venus red metallic, not apple red, Venus red metallic. So, out it comes. There we are. And out drops two of the small cleaning tools. We've got the upholstery and stair nozzle in a translucent red and the dusting brush as well little bit of uh, distortion to the brushes. It's been in the box so long. This is very common. A little bit of very hot water soaked for a little while should soften those and they should go back to how they should be. Whoops a daisy. This is the hose support and the handle at the back. It also holds the two wands. I think you get two with this. Of course we've got the instruction book. The hose, I think they are pretty long hoses on the Pure Power. They should reach right up the stairs. I'll see if I can check that out in, in this video. But you can see it's see-through when you stretch it out. So you can see if there's any blockage. You've got one tool here with the scabbard tool built in. So I think that could be it for cleaning tools. Of course the handle. Yeah, that seems okay. Nothing broken. And it has a very slight metallic fleck. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up, but there is a slight metallic fleck on there. Ooh, you've got a grey flex with this one. Now, I think you can still buy this model but it has really been replaced by the Enigma, which has an even lower wattage motor. I think this has a 700 watt motor. Um, this predates the, um, the current EU regulations because there's been two sets of EU regulations covering vacuum cleaners. And we're now onto the second set of regulations, which made things a little bit, uh, little bit more stringent requirements to have the EU energy label. And one of the requirements was the noise level has to be 80 decibels or less. Now I'm pretty sure this goes over 80 decibels. I think it's something like 89. I'll see if there's the energy label in the box. We'll check that out. But now the current Pure Power slash Enigma, I think is only, it's either 350 or 450 watt motor. I think it's 350 watt. So it is under 80 decibels but it has a considerably lower wattage motor, so the suction could be reduced even further. So, there we go, it's pretty light. 
And in the UK, there's not many bagged upright vacuum cleaners available. All the, all the ones I can think of are the Miele U1 range, of course, Sebo, the X7s. And that's about it. There's the uh, Vorwerk, which is very, very expensive. But at the lower end of the market, really, it's just this model or the Enigma. If you want a cheaper bagged upright vacuum, there's not a lot of choice. And as I say, this could well be discontinued now. Well, this particular variant with a 700 watt motor is discontinued. But you might be able to still find it online or similar. I did the um, Enigma a while ago, did a full demo of that. But that, that wasn't the current Enigma, that had a higher wattage motor. So there we go, there's the cable unwrapped. So actually there's not quite so much assembly on this one. As I said, I'll do it off camera. All I've got to do is connect this two screws just there. Just got to connect it here to the back of the machine and attach the hose and the accessories. And of course, I need to fit the handle to the top of the cleaner. Well, here she is fully assembled and looking quite festive actually against my jumper. What a coincidence. <laughs> But anyway, um, it didn't feel quite as plasticky to assemble as an earlier Pure Power. I think it was a 2300 watt model, the one that was silver and red. That's also on my channel. That was very noisy. So I'm hoping this one, even though it's 89 decibels, isn't going to sound quite so bad. Now I found the energy label somewhere. Here it is behind me. So we'll just quickly read this out. So it does get an A rating for energy use. It's model PU71, PU01001. It uses on average 27 kilowatt hours per annum. Gets a C rating for dust emissions. I'll have a look at the filters later. Gets a C for dust pickup from carpet, a B for dust pickup from hard floors, and yes, it's 89 decibels. Here's the underside of the cleaner with quite a different brush roll compared to earlier models. It's not an activator brush roll and I don't think you could retrofit this either with the original activator. Even if you had one, it does seem a lot narrower. Certainly the suction path, the suction opening on this one seems a lot narrower. This is prob probably to increase the performance. It's also got these squeegees front and back, which will improve the performance on a hard floor, but uh, it's anyone's guess how long these squeegees will last. They're not very long, so um, obviously with use they will rub down a bit. And the brushes, they're quite dense, fairly soft, but not too soft. No beating action or anything, no activator pads as on the earlier Pure Powers. And it looks like it would actually go fairly close to the edge. There's not much of a gap either side. Obviously here is where the belt is. This takes a regular belt which will need to be replaced from time to time. And I think Mark did buy me a couple of belts as well to go with this. Two front carrier wheels, they move up and down according to the height setting selected. And at the back, of course, we've got two wheels here. I'll just quickly check the rating sticker. Um, I don't know if we can date this. Oh, it's a 750 watt motor on this and it's obviously made in China. The serial is 3910040. Not sure if that's a th supposed to be a three there. The exhaust filter for the Pure Power is located on the back here. Despite the fact it has a grill on the front, the exhaust there comes out either side. One side here and one side at the back. And to access the filter, we can take the door off. They still have, even on this molding, they still have the little cutout for the square or oblong air freshener Hoover introduced with just one fragrance. I found, found it quite a vile smell, unlike the nice smells that uh, Hoover had with the round air fresheners first supplied with the original turbo power. Is there a date wheel on this? No, it just says Hoover and ABS. But um, I'm surprised that it has a pleated HEPA type filter. I thought it would be one of the cheaper filters. So that's uh, not bad, is it? I don't think these are washable actually on these. So that fits on the back there. And we'll make sure the door goes on. The door also incorporates 
if I can show you with a light, an anti-tip hook. I'll show you how that works. It's for when you're using the stair cleaning hose. If I can locate it at the bottom first, there we go. Make sure that's in position. And further up on the back of the cleaner, of course, we've got the very long stair cleaning hose. We've got all the tools on board. Now, there is space. You can nest the scabbard tool. Whoops, a daisy. Let's take that, take the flex out of the way anyway. You can nest the scabbard crevice tool inside the extension wand, but there's no need to on this because there are two positions to store them separately, but you can nest them if you want to. But that's how it fits on. And then of course you'd attach the hose to that. So you can reach up high. Also, the other two nozzles will fit directly onto this. So you can use the dusting brush on the end of that to reach up high. Of course, the other nozzle will fit just there. And of course you can use it without the scabbard because both nozzles will fit also directly to the round extension wand. So, you know, there's no surprises here. There's no design change really. It has cheapened over the years, even more so. Even when Hoover first introduced it, it wasn't, you know, the best quality. A lot of people would cite the pure power as being Hoover's sort of demise uh, as far as quality goes. But earlier pure powers that were made in Scotland, and I have a few of those, they are leaps ahead in quality compared to the very later Chinese models. But um, it is the same with many manufacturers, I have to say, unfortunately. So you can see further up, we've got the onboard tool storage for the upholstery stair cleaning tool and the dusting brush. You've got the, just a bit lower down here, this is the lower cord hook and it's also your carry handle. And this is the upper cord hook here, which you can turn down to release the mains cable in one go. On the other side of the cleaner, you've got the single rocker on off switch and a little blank piece here, which on earlier models would have featured a bag full indicator light. Speaking of bags, of course, this is a bagged upright vacuum cleaner and the bag is located behind this panel. And again, I'm just seeing if there's a date wheel, can't see one. And on this one, it's just a paper bag, but I think you can get fleece bags. I do have a little bit of a supply of the earlier fleece bags they did for this machine. I can't remember the bag code. I'm not sure if the H18 fleece bags fit this. I've managed to make them fit a lot of Hoover cleaners. I won't be using this paper bag for the demo. I'll keep the paper bag that came with it original. This is an H20 bag. And when you remove it from the cleaner properly, it does seal this little flap. Does close over like that. When you pull it up, it doesn't always work and that should seal in the dirt. So you can just pop that in the bin and slot in a new bag onto the fixed bag support tube, earlier models. And I've got some that have the little support that comes out a little uh, sort of, um, I don't know what you'd call it anyway. It's just like they, it makes it a bit easier to fit the bag with this one. Well, it's still not difficult, let's face it. This is the pre-motor filter. If I can get it out, it's rather stiff. Just get my finger in there. There we are. So that's a dual layered pre-motor filter, obviously. The suction comes from the bottom here. The motor's located obviously at the base of the bag housing. Pop that back in there. There's a little sticker in there with a phone number so you can obtain genuine Hoover parts. You're going to have trouble. See, once you've closed these, they're a bit hard to, to actually open up again. But I will endeavour to do it. All right, I can't do it now, so <laughs> we'll leave it for now. Now with this machine, you can actually put the bag door on, I believe, without the bag in place. There's nothing to stop you, but I wouldn't recommend it. I don't know how you'd empty the muck out. Does that close? There we go, yes. And it's got this nice little logo here saying the Hoover Cleaner. To conclude the tour of this Hoover Pure Power, we've got the top of the cleaner head, which incorporates the four position height control. So you've got setting one, which gives the best efficiency for carpet and hard floor cleaning. 
So this is for low pile carpet and for general floor cleaning, hard floors, wooden floors, um, stone floors, any sort of floor really. But setting two is for medium pile carpets and more delicate flooring such as vinyl floors. Then you've got setting three which is more medium to long and setting four for your very long pile or shag carpeting. It's also the position you use when you're using the onboard tools. Now this is the main Achilles heel of the Hoover Pure Power and that's the handle release mechanism. It's very stiff to operate and really you need shoes on. It's very hard to push with just socks on but I've got my Christmas socks on so I'm going to press it down with the heel of my foot. It'll still make an awful cracking noise I expect. I'm not too bad. So that is one of the main things that fails quite early with a Hoover Pure Power. It wasn't always the case, it wasn't always great, but earlier models that I've got, it's a lot easier to push. Hoover never changed that. They did when they introduced the Freedom Bagless, the first Freedom Bagless, the Air Evolution Freedom. They made a larger foot pedal, which was easier to push. And also on the Hoover Vortex, which had a Pure Power base, it had a much nicer, larger pedal, but they kept it the same on the Pure Power and subsequently it's remained very awkward. So you press it once to get the machine to the regular operating position and to clean under low furniture you've got to press the pedal again there's that awful click and then the handle lowers at fairly low. The uh, carry handle on the back does stop it going a bit lower than it could but It'll certainly get under some low furniture, but otherwise you'll have to take off the hose and use the attachments if you've got any very low pieces of furniture. Okay, well that's the tour of the Hoover Pure Power. Let's put down some dirt and we'll also see how noisy this thing is. Regular viewers will know who this is. This is Daisy and uh, Daisy provides most of the hair I pick up in my vacuum demos. I'm ferminating her at the moment with this ferminator tool. Daisy's off to Madame Beryl's, aren't you later, Daisy, for a, a shampoo and set. So she's going to come back all clean and fluffy and uh, she won't have so much hair to harvest. So I'm doing it now in order to see how well the Pure Power picks up her hair. I think that'll do, Daisy. What with the hair I've just retrieved and some I had in stock. I think that'll be fine, so thank you very much. Move Daisy to one side. Rub the remainder of the hair in. Let's see how well this Pure Power picks up dog hair, because of course, none of the EU energy ratings show pet hair pickup from carpet. They just show dust pickup. So if you're a pet owner, you want to know how well your vacuum is going to clean up the hairs that your beloved pets leave. So that's well and truly rubbed in. Let's see how well the Pure Power does. I'm going to use it on the setting one, which will give the most intensive clean of this carpet. Well, apart from the very obvious line of shame where the belt guard is, you can see it's not picked up anything there at all. It has done an amazing job. That is probably one of the better results I've had all year using a vacuum cleaner on pet hairs. Sometimes they struggle, especially of course suction cleaners with no revolving brush. They always struggle with pet hair, but sometimes even upright cleaners do. But this one, the actual area where the brushes have touched the carpet, it is spotless. I cannot fault. Let's just try. You see, even pressing hard on the carpet normally reveals some extra hair. But that, that is a complete clean sweep. That is pretty impressive. So, wow. I'm going to clean up the rest of this. I don't think it's going to have any problem picking up all of this hair. And then I'm going to put down some general dirt and see how well the Pure Power copes with that.
well here's one heck of a mess that no vacuum cleaner would normally have to cope with but I do extreme demonstrations if it picks this up it'll have no trouble picking up average dirt in the average home so there's a, a lot here on this carpet mixture of fluff hairs bits of paper there's rice lentils there's some fine coffee and because it's Christmas and to add a bit of colour I've put some fluorescent sand some pink and green fluorescent sand into the carpet well let's see how it works and incidentally I couldn't fit a fleece bag to this so the bag I'm using for the demo is the bag that was fitted the um, twin layered paper bag so it might lose a bit of suction towards the end of this demo okay let's see how well the pure power copes with all this mess <laughs> Again, a pretty impressive performance from this Hoover Pure Power. In fact, I'm quite surprised at this performance. It's not what I expected at all. Now, you might have noticed when I passed the machine forward, it did leave a lot of the dirt, but on the reverse stroke, it picked most of that up. And that's the case with many vacuum cleaners or most vacuum cleaners, they always pick up more on the reverse pass. And of course, the slower you go, the more dirt they're going to pick up. I didn't go as fast as I might have gone if I was normally vacuuming, but I was picking up rather a lot of dirt. It's not a complete clean sweep. There are a few bits here and there, but all in all, that is pretty impressive. Again, I'm pretty impressed with this Hoover Pure Power. It's picked everything up. I had to raise the height of the brush to setting two and three because it was scattering a bit of the dirt. But everything I put down on this carpet has been picked up and is now safely inside the bag. The bag will be fairly full now, I expect. Oh, yes. That's fairly full, pretty packed in at the bottom there, but there's still. I think there's still quite a bit of suction. We'll see, shall we? I haven't got a suction gauge yet. Hopefully Santa will be bringing me one of those, but I, can, I just have to use my experience of uh, putting my hands over the nozzles. <laughs> Still a fair bit of suction there, more than enough to pick up dirt. Anyway, while I'm here, I might as well see how well it copes on my kitchen floor. But before that, let's see how long this stair cleaning hose is. Hoover claim it reaches up a standard flight of 13 stairs. Well, let's put that claim to the test. Well, at the moment, I'm stood on the ninth step of my staircase and there's still plenty of reach left in this hose. So we know it'll clean nine, 10, 11 steps with ease. Now this is a half landing here and I can even reach right to the back of this half landing. So that would be like 12 stairs. So on a normal staircase of 13 steps, you'd sort of go up again. So that would be where the hose is now that would be 13 steps. This is my 13th step in my home that forms the landing. So 12th step is the half landing. And this here is the landing, which would be 13 steps. Even though stretching right round, I could even clean this. 
So it's certainly very good for stair cleaning. I will turn the machine on though, because obviously with the suction of the cleaner, it might want to pull the stretchy hose back into the machine. So I'll just see if it's easy enough to clean with the cleaner switched on. So yes, stair cleaning is something else that the Hoover Pure Power does well. It certainly has a very long stretchable hose. As you saw, I had no trouble reaching up the top of my stairs. Now you don't actually use the anti-tip hook when you're cleaning stairs. As long as the machine is safely at the bottom, wedged up against the bottom stair, as you pull the hose, it remains stable and it won't topple over. You might find you'll need to use the anti-tip hook when you're cleaning say your upholstery and then you just clip the hose onto the hook at the bottom like that and then in theory the machine should actually follow you so this is ideal when you're using the machine to clean your upholstery okay i'm just going to curl up the hose put the tools back and one final demo we'll see how well the hula pure power picks up dirt from a hard floor Okay then, final demo for this video. It looks like a unicorn has been a bit poorly on my kitchen floor. I'm going to use the Pure Power on setting 2, which is suitable for floors. Setting 1 is the recommended setting, but I think on setting 1 it's going to snow plough too much. It'll probably do well with the fine particles, including the, uh, the fluorescent sand I've put down. But the larger bits of fluff, it's just going to push. Even on setting 2, I think it might push those to the front of the nozzle. So let's see if we can have a hat trick. Is this going to be any good on floors? I think it gets a B, doesn't it, for hard floors? It's going to be a bit noisier though in the kitchen. You can't have everything can you it's done what i thought it would do it has snow plowed very apt for a christmas video it has snow plowed rather a lot of the larger dirt the smaller finer dirt it's done quite well but nowhere near as good as the carpet cleaning performance the pet hair and the general dirt from carpets was very very good i will be able to clean all this up but i think to get all these larger particles I might have to put it on setting three or even setting four and then finish the job on the lower setting. I can probably finish it off on setting two. So just to clean the rest of this muck up, I'm going to try it on setting four. So on that setting, it's at the highest position. So the brushes are barely going to touch the floor, but hopefully the suction will be powerful enough to pick up all these larger bits. And I am still using the same bag. I haven't emptied the bag. It's still got all that dirt in from the previous demonstrations. Well, I'm going to abandon cleaning the rest of the floor with a pure power. It's not ideal, but then any upright cleaner with a revolving brush that you can't turn off isn't the best for cleaning hard floors, especially if you've got delicate hard floors. There's a lot of scratching and scraping noises using this, and I didn't really like it on this floor. So 
it's not so good, as I said, for cleaning hard floors, especially not a load of dirt, but for regular hard floor cleaning, it'll be fine, but you're probably better off using a broom or a suction cleaner in this case. But if you've got a lot of carpet, you've got pets and you've got stairs to vacuum, for a budget priced banged upright cleaner, I think it's worth looking at. Well, there you go. That's the end of today's advent video. It turned out into a little bit more of an epic than I was planning. It was only supposed to be a quick demo, but all in all, as I've said, pretty impressed with this. For the money, if you can pick this up for about 80 odd pounds or less, it's well worth considering in my opinion. But bear in mind, you will have to buy belts from time to time. And of course, because it's a bagged vacuum, you will have to replace the bag. Speaking of bags, before I go, We'll just have a look. This bag will be very, very full now. Pull it out. And it has sealed itself. So all that dirt is inside that bag. No dusty mess when I pulled it out. A nice, clean, hygienic dirt disposal method. The old ways, in my opinion, are the best. Bagged vacuum cleaners have come a long way since the early days when Mr. Dyson came along with his bagless unit because now bag technology is far better. Even this paper bag, the cleaner was still picking up. Obviously it didn't do very well on the kitchen floor, but that's the design of the head that's more to do with that. It still had suction though. And looking inside, well, it's still pretty clean in there. So in my opinion, and this is just based on my experience of using vacuum cleaners, if people were to ask me what type of vacuum I preferred, it would always be down to bagged vacuums. I like bagless vacuums as well. I like all sorts of vacuums. But personally, if I was told you could only have one or two vacuum cleaners, whichever cleaners I choose would certainly be bagged and probably made in Germany. So, all in all though, this Pure Power has done very well. So, a bit of a Christmas surprise again. Thank you very much, Mark. I hope you enjoyed the video. So this is dedicated to you, Mark, for getting me the Pure Power. It's an old machine now, but it still manages to hold its own. See you tomorrow, same time, same place for another Advent video. Bye for now.